thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about what is LiFi and um, what are some of the ecosystem and the challenge that we have. So this is really more looking at it from a pure LiFi perspective. So a little bit about us. We were co-founded by Professor Harold Haas, who coined the term LiFi back in 2011 during the TED Talk. We've come out with uh, world's first with respect to LiFi systems that are generating revenue today. Um, working with some of the largest technology providers and device vendors, created the world's uh, first light antenna and a gigabit light antenna with a strong patent portfolio and lots of um, awards and technology recognition products around the globe. We're a relatively small but very tightly knit team um, based out of Edinburgh, and uh, we're very, very excited to see change as a consequence of, of our work. So what do we mean when we talk about LiFi? This has been defined a number of times. And I guess an important element to add is we use the entire light spectrum, visible or invisible or infrared, to deliver this interconnected networked experience, but as well as the looking at the opportunity of using device-to-device -device connectivity, which is completely complementary and additive to what um, to RF solutions that exist in the market today. <clears throat> so what do we need uh, more wireless for, right? That's basically what it comes down to. Well, I guess some of the challenges that we're facing today, as were mentioned previously, is privacy and security. security. There are a number of different um, attack vectors that effectively RF is vulnerable to. There's speed and bandwidth issues, in particular when it comes time for sharing the wireless medium, and especially if you're looking at quality of service types of elements, and the quality of connection is very, very important so that we're clear where and how that, um, that is going to look out for. So we've identified kind of pain points that LiFi seems to be solving across a range of industries that boil down to some of these core um, features of LiFi. So if we look a little bit closer, what we see is that the defense industry, the industrial space, and the consumers have a similar range of problems. So of course, some of the work that we've done uh, with the US DOD is looking at the electromagnetic footprint and how those devices look like in the space. But what we're seeing is that Wi-Fi is suffering and cyber uh, is, is suffering in particular when it comes down to the home environment and to the industrial enterprise IoT environment. We see there's a much greater threat coming in to not just the enterprise space, but also the home space. And so you have this transition where problems that used to be government only are very quickly becoming problems of the industry. I think probably the, the cyber attack shut down on the world's fifth largest beer maker, Molson Coors was an issue. I think some of you probably saw the ransomware that, is, that was attacked for the NHS and so on. So the question is, how do you try and come up with some of the with a solution to some of the vulnerabilities with RF and how do you improve that information assurance? In our world, we think LiFi helps. So LiFi can deliver the speed and bandwidth that's required, the low latency, which is which can be easily much, much lower than their typical RF counterparts because nobody's fighting for channel access. It has a near zero EM footprint which means you can deploy it in almost any environment. And I'm sure people will be talking about some of the environments where they are using it. The quality of the connection can be much greater because the interference free communications is there in terms of the density of the network. So you can keep adding Li-Fi access points and you can keep reusing the full spectrum of the channel. You have very high levels of security that physically limit your RF signal so that you know exactly where the, that information is going to and exactly who is listening to that information. And of course, because we're operating in an unlicensed spectrum or a license exempt spectrum, the same solution that is developed in China can be applied in Germany or in uh, Bolivia or in the US with no questions asked. It is simply identical. And it, that's very, very important when it comes time for uh, understanding the overall consequences of spectrum sharing and licensing, in particular on cross-borders. So what's the pathway um, that we see? This is all about talking or trying to understand how does LiFi go mass market? Some of the ecosystem challenges were very well articulated by Musa, and they're, they're very real. We've tried to look at it from an 
uh, end customer use case perspective and where we think the time is going to come through with us. So from what we've seen and what we've experienced, currently wireless access with military grade security is hugely important in the defense space. And we've seen a significant uptake in that space as a core driver. That demand is now driving manufacturers and device integrators to create platforms, which is extending the toolkit that's available to the uh, industry as a whole. Connected manufacturing and maintenance is following on the back of that as they're looking to create more digital environments in RF limited or denied spaces or insecure areas. And they're looking to integrate the next generation of productivity, such as AR and VR capabilities, we see an uptick in the requirement for secure, reliable, robust wireless communications in those spaces, dovetailing along with the same feature sets and product requirements coming out of the defense space. So both of those elements are here today and are moving forward. What we're also seeing, however, is the need for fast and secure device-to-device -device connectivity becoming more and more prevalent. And we'll zoom in on that feature in particular, some of the kind of phone-to-phone -phone connectivity that we've seen or phone-to-TV connectivity that we've seen. And lastly, we see that bandwidth offloading in the home will be critical. Why should you be hanging on your precious Wi-Fi system at home if you're trying to stream or cast your, your screen or mirror your screen to the TV when somebody's trying to download something with the phone in their pocket when you could be using light? And then of course that drives to an inevitable broader ecosystem of enabling every device in the home to be Wi-Fi connected in the enterprise as well as the home space. So um, this was mentioned earlier, basically looking at a specific case study with the Kaifin product we've deployed with the US Army Europe and Africa. It's the first large scale deployment of Li-Fi of this nature, providing mission critical communications with thousands of units, uh, creating significant wireless security um, in the space. This is really looking at adding a meaningful element to an actual operational command, not just a proof of concept or a pilot. And this type of requirements and demand is what will drive this technology forward. But that's not the, the extent of it. We've also seen that transition into a complementary solution where deployment with uh, the Kyle Academy in Scotland created actually a combined benefit. We deployed Li-Fi in a single classroom, whereas the other classroom was still Wi-Fi enabled. And what we saw was an aggregate um, improved performance because the load was taken from the congested RF spectrum into the light spectrum, and it created a better learning and a better, more connected environment for everybody in the space. And we see demand for these types of hybrid solutions increasing as people want to meaning, uh, seamlessly transition without any thought between an RF in space and a light uh, connected space. So this is where we see the home coming in. You know, power line communications was very appropriately discussed just now. It is a great solution that can take from, hold on, let's see if this works. Can you see the, the laser pointer? Yes. Yes, yeah. I can. It is a great solution that will take whatever fiber or coax cable ends up coming into the home from that box and distribute it to every single socket that you have available for illumination in the space throughout the house. Instantly, you can get Li-Fi enabled PLC connected devices that are actually providing a full blown home coverage use case. But in addition to that, you can have a phone to phone communications or phone to TV communications or TV to access point communications. All of these bandwidth heavy elements can now be connected with Li-Fi in the home. So what have we seen? Well, we've seen way back when, starting with prototype Li-Fi systems, to commercial systems, to initial pilots in industry offices and defense, to smartphones and proof of concepts being, um, and tablet proof of concepts being developed. And that's kind of where we are now. We see that movement of the real world defense and industrial applications really taking into the next stage for real world office and retail deployments. And some of the speakers later will talk to what their experience is with deploying Li-Fi in the office and the automotive and industrial spaces. This is the pathway that will lead to consumer grade pilots. And when eventual standardization is done, of course, with the IEEE 802.11BB being very important for this stage, 
we also see mainstream Wi-Fi coming through. And the 802.11bb standard in particular brings in that kind of consumer grade chipset availability for Wi-Fi that is found in almost every single device in the world today. And that's what will allow the scale and the transition from specialist use cases into very much mass market use cases. The Light Communication Alliance, as was discussed earlier, plays a huge role in how this shapes up. And we would really, really welcome and encourage everybody to join us on this journey and help us create this ecosystem and make sure that we're addressing the problems that you see. At the same time though, um, I chair the IEEE 802.11bb task group, which is standardizing LiFi in the scope, which means LiFi, according to 802.11bb, will be natively interoperable with Wi-Fi. There are billions of Wi-Fi baseband chipsets that are available and integration with them can be done with very minimal, if any modification to the, chip, to the chipset. It is a much reduced barrier to entry for the mass market. At a very high level, this is the kind of standardization timeline where we're looking at getting a stable draft sometime in the first half next year, potentially pre-standard devices available in the second half of next year and really standard compliant devices available sometime in 2023. This is a very high level um, graphic. It is not meant to commit uh, the TGBB group to any such timings. And it's very, very important to understand that this is a, the 802.11bb group is a standards body that is contributions driven. So while we try to do our best to get it on time and make sure that things happen, um, at the end of the day, the members decide the pace of change um, in that environment. But what we're really seeing is that the LCA in combination with TGBB and the mass market is what creates that kind of uh, fertile ground for mass market deployability. So to that extent, Pure Li-Fi has created um, a made for mobile system that is a light antenna that is roughly the size of a single Euro cent designed specifically for mobile device communications. Li-Fi really is ready. It's ready for um, today and it's more, more, and it gets more and more advanced on a daily basis. Large scale deployments are there. As Musa said, the technology is sufficient for the use cases that are needed. Security is important, quality of service, phones with new technology that can really excite and serve demand. Baseband chipsets that are ready for Li-Fi are in everything, if you, especially if you take data to that 11 BB approach. And with that approach, you can make Li-Fi and Wi-Fi work together seamlessly. So with that, I'd like to share a short video with you. So I'm gonna just stop share here because I need the sound. Bear with me, uh, share screen. And if I share sound, screen two, right. Can you hear that? Can people see and hear that or not? We can see, but we can't hear. Did you did you click on the button? Uh... Yeah, just give it a second. There's no sound until now. Demonstrate the no. Li-Fi enabled. Yeah, it now is. Now it is. Now it is. Yeah. As you can see here, the phone case incorporates two light antennas, one front facing and the other top facing. The phone case also incorporates two indicator LED lights for demonstration purposes. This would not be required in the real world integration. These lights do not transmit data. First, we will demonstrate how the Li-Fi enabled phone can quickly and securely transfer a file while pointing at another Li-Fi enabled phone. As you can see here, this 4K video is transferring. Sorry. Demonstrate how the Li-Fi enabled phone can quickly and securely transfer a file while pointing at another Li-Fi enabled phone. As you can see here, this 4K video is transferring in a couple of seconds. Li-Fi is a wireless technology that requires intentional connectivity. As you can see here, when the phone is pointed away from the target, there is no transfer of data, allowing for the user to control where information is shared. This makes Li-Fi particularly useful for sending payments or secure information. It is also possible to screen share between phones, taking advantage of Li-Fi's fast, low latency connections. 
LiFi can enable all new multiplayer gaming scenarios that enable fast, reliable, low latency gaming, just like using your console at home. As you can see here, the use of LiFi is not only fast, but provides intentional and secure connections. As LiFi does not use radio frequencies and offers low latency connections, the user experience and the quality of connections can enable new user experiences with just your mobile phone. Okay, so with that, we'd like to say thank you very much.